Today we are speaking with Jean Smith in her East Vancouver home, which seems to be more of a studio. Right, Jean? It has turned out to be primarily a workspace. So it's a small room, and everything that I want to accomplish here in painting, in music, and writing needs to happen in, in this room. So, uh, you know, it's great for me. I wake up in my in my studio space, which is my most creative time of day, uh, getting up early in the morning. But yeah, it's not it's not conducive really to uh, traditional entertaining or socializing. What are you currently working on as far as writing goes? Uh, with the writing, I have a couple of columns that uh, I'm generating regularly, and I'm editing, re-editing uh, a novel that I completed a couple of years ago. What's the next step? Uh, the next step for that manuscript is getting it published or finding an agent. Are you looking for an agent in the U.S. or Canada? I have done a round of querying in the traditional way that that, that is supposed to result in in, in rejection, <laughs> I think, is, so, is the accepted purpose of querying is that you, you get rejected. But, uh, yeah, U.S. primarily I'm looking at. What is your most recent novel about? Uh, well, the one I'm referring to that I'm editing is not uh, the most recent one. The most recent one is the Black Dot Museum of Political Art. What else have you been working on? There's a new Mecca Normal album, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a new Mecca Normal album. Uh, we recorded it in uh, Miami Beach uh, in November last year. And uh, typically when, in, when we've recorded an album, pretty much we leave the studio and send it directly to the record label. In this case, uh, we came back and really have we have felt comfortable not doing much of anything with it. Uh, uh, so it's, this is a different sort of way to, to proceed, the not proceeding, which is part of an overall sort of uh, working on being patient with things and waiting for the right time. Are you painting? Painting. Uh, I have done a lot of painting. I would say a lot of painting uh, very early part of this year. So, you know, I'm ready to paint. I may paint today, but I, I wouldn't say I'm in the throes of painting, per se. As an interviewer, there's a lot to consider. You write, make music and paint, and you do an event. A classroom event that seems to deal with all these activities. Uh, yeah, so that that is, in fact, uh, almost a hindrance unless unless I consider it to be another way to to organize uh, the output the creative output is that there there are a lot of areas now that that need attending to uh, as well as uh, kind of facilitating you know there's a lot of projects and they tend to be long big projects so it would be easier in a way to isolate one aspect of your creative output or to ask you about a specific time, like the 1990s or working with K Records. Uh, yeah, it would in, in many ways be uh, more efficient to, uh, to consider, as you say, uh, you know, what, what was happening in the 90s because that included a lot of our more uh, uh, kind of well-known, what we're known for is... Uh, I hope we're known for sort of socially agitating within culture or, or with a political sort of overview. Do you have goals at this point for what you want to do within the music industry or in terms of being published or an art exhibit you're working towards? Uh, there isn't an art exhibit that, that's coming up and that's okay. Uh, with the writing it's, it's always a matter of uh, really enjoying the process, especially the, the longer pieces, the novels, of, of uh, honing them. But uh, the, the novels, I think, are the, m the most demanding of, of uh, a relationship with uh, a reader, for instance, in that case, whereas these other things, 
uh, tend to be, you know, more in the moment, the enjoyment of making music. The, the purpose of making music is the actual making of the music, and the documenting of it is kind of a secondary process, and then disseminating it comes comes after that. And we've done a lot of a lot of these these things, so it's not always as uh, stimulating. I was looking at Facebook yesterday and I noticed a comment someone made. A guy was asking you if you ever hung out with people who were nice to you. Oh, oh yeah, okay, so, uh, yeah, so... It seemed like you gave this very reasonable answer and then later, you added something else. Is that typical of how you tend to react to your experiences? Uh, in that I, I take a, a certain amount of time to to uh, to con continue considering things and finding more avenues that uh, are of, of interest, really. Yes. It just seemed like the longer it was being considered, the less patience you had for the guy even though he hadn't continued his part of the dialogue. Okay, this is a bit convoluted unless, unless you happen to follow my Facebook, but uh, yeah, it was a matter of somebody, I guess, noticing that, I, that I'm quite negative, even though I do over a larger range of time try to maintain a balance. Do you regard general writing and interactions on Facebook as part of researching a more formal piece of writing, like a novel? Uh, yeah, it's, it's human research. It's not specific to anything I'm working on. There was another interaction I was curious about. It seemed less loaded, less abrasive. Someone suggested you start a blog on Tumblr. Your reaction was interesting. You said something about not wanting to be in blog writing mode. I think you inferred that you were happy writing on Facebook, which isn't usually regarded as the actual place one writes. Facebook is where you tell people where to read the writing you did elsewhere. Well, that's a matter of uh, continuing uh, to subvert, you know, what it is that you have at hand and what it is that you are supposed to be doing. So uh, that's something I've always done. It's just that the, the infrastructure keeps shifting. You made a video about the hike you went on. In fact, it's called the hike. Yeah, that that that's a, a, a good example of what I just said. In that, uh, normally it would go somewhere else. Uh, it would be, uh, you know, go, go on to a film festival or something. In this case, it just stays on Facebook. If one follows your Facebook entries, one notices that you make and post a lot of work. It seems like Facebook is your venue of choice where other artists use it to promote their art. But doesn't your choice of venue say something about how you regard the quality of your own art? Well, it maybe says something about wanting to create a neutral venue that isn't an art gallery or a big publisher or a record label. I, I think it's interesting to have access to means and, and yet to prefer a more... Uh, can you show me some of your recent paintings? Uh, sure. It, we'll just step into uh, the bathroom, actually, and have a look. So the, the, these are uh, paintings that uh, I did in Miami over a month, and they are a continuation of, of a series out of uh, a recent novel, The Black Dot Museum of Political Art. Uh, so there's a story in that they were they were done by the protagonist who is a narcissist. Uh, so these are a continuation of the series that were part of the Black Dot Museum of Political Art exhibition in Olympia, right? Right. They are part of that exhibition, but they also come out of the novel by the same name, and they were done by the protagonist, Martin Lewis. Uh, at a point where he took a body of work, his, his traditional landscapes, and to impress a uh, political activist who he'd taken a shine to, a young woman, he wanted to make all of his artwork political, to uh, get her attention, to appeal to her, to win her over. So uh, she was protesting a coal mine uh, from going in across from where they lived on Denman Island and uh, she, uh, you know, wasn't really taking enough notice of this Martin Lewis uh, uh, really until the point where he put this big, big red blob in the middle of, you know, 35 years worth of his paintings 
to attract her attention. So in a way, it symbolizes what to what length a narcissist will go to get attention. Uh, he'll basically sacrifice himself. If you don't consider yourself to be part of the art world, how do you establish value and prices? How do I establish value and prices? Uh, well, uh, because I, I'm not really uh, trying to make a living. I mean, I would like to make a living, but <laughs> not not necessarily with the art. So I, I I put the prices very high so they won't sell. How much does your collaborative work dictate what you need to focus on? My collaborative work. Uh, with David is is primary to to the schedule of events. I'm sure there are many other ways we could have handled this interview, <laughs> and I suppose that's the point. Yeah, yeah, we could have actually uh, tried to focus on a, you know just music or just writing, but uh, all of these all of these things at this point are in fact overlapping and informing each other more than they ever have before. So. Uh, uh, so, what was it like to work with Kramer? Okay, uh, <laughs> it was fine, thank you. Uh, we did good work. He was present and uh, seemed satisfied uh, with what we did, and then he basically went and uh, and mixed the album in in the context that he is. He also played bass, didn't he? He he did. He played bass on uh, a lot of our. Uh, a lot of the songs, uh, Dave was keen to have a, a, a low-end presence that the guitar doesn't primarily address. So, uh, yeah, he, he did that. And you don't know when the album is coming out? The album is coming out uh, whenever there seems to be a reason for it to come out. You know, I want to be available to tour and to uh, really make uh, a lot out of the experience uh, and, and that needs to be timed because we'll be taking time away from other projects to devote to that so it's now more a matter of deciding where the focus lies and why. To me it sounds like you were finding ways around having to work with people. To work with people, ways around working with people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Working with people can be uh, disappointing in that, uh, you know, I've had this great uh, partnership with Dave and, uh, you know, at this point in life, uh, I, I have ways that I like to work and uh, work is what I do pretty much all the time and uh, I, I find that uh, it's difficult to to uh, coordinate personalities that uh, that I want to uh, explore with, I suppose. So yeah, working working in uh, the solo context is uh, is. Okay, let me ask one final question about how you maintain the infrastructure you require. By that I mean the day-to-day -day workings of being a creative individual who isn't making a living with art. The day-to-day -day workings. Of a creative individual who isn't making a living with art. Uh, well, again, it's about uh, maintaining some sort of motivation and also uh, balancing it with what you do uh, that does bring in enough to live on without that thing taking over your life. So I've found, in fact, when you speak of working with people, that's part of the equation is to not be doing a lot of socializing. I could I could be out doing all sorts of things that cost money, take time, but I, I have made a conscious decision to apply myself to uh, these other matters and, and live very frugally, fairly frugally, and concentrate on uh, on being patient with the results of, of long-term projects.